Thanks, Johnny. Uh, and thank you, everybody. Thanks for my invitation to come and speak to you all tonight. Uh, we, uh, I farm at Eve's Hill Farm in Norfolk, and uh, we, as Anna said, are very much on uh, a journey, um, a regenerative journey, uh, changing our management practices from conventional, which uh, adopted by my grandfather and my father, and uh, over the past five to six years, I've changed the way that we manage and practice the farm, basically. And by way of introduction, um, I thought I'd just read out uh, something that was sent to me the other day, basically. We're very um, keen in involving the local community on our farm, um, be that with volunteer days uh, or school visits. And we recently had a school visit uh, to the farm. Uh, and it's possibly one of the proudest days of my farming career. Uh, and it basically gives you an idea of what we're doing and trying to do on the farm. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, we had a school out to the farm and the following day, they had a brainstorming session about what they took in and what they learned from their visit. And the teacher kindly sent me um, some of the takeaway responses from the, the questions of what they took away and what are the positive of my job as a farmer. Uh, and I'm just going to read out to you a few uh, of what the children uh, came back their teacher with. And I think this is appropriate because we're talking about grassroots policies and this is why this is important to me because this is, and this is why I enjoy welcoming many schools onto the farm because I believe that if we're going to tackle so many of the issues that we're talking about, we need to start grassroots and that happens with schools and school visits. So the responses from the children were, um, Jeremy isn't trying to battle with nature. He is trying to work with nature. He does it with love. He is building a community. He is helping people but by providing delicious and nutrient dense food without spoiling the environment. He is looking after the land for the next generation. He is in the nature and the fresh air, which is good for well-being and health. He is making a good business that also gets other people to enjoy nature when they camp and stay at the farm. He gives his animals a nice life. I would like to be a farmer. It makes me want to grow stuff and I want to take my family there. And for me, that was the most satisfying and, 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 and one of the proudest days uh, on the farm because it, it really sends the message home that uh, people are understanding what we're trying to do on farm as a regenerative farm. Um, so going back into more detail about what we do at Eatill Farm, um, everything that we do as a regenerative farm is underpinned by soil health. Without good, healthy soils that can function properly, cycle nutrients and cycle water, uh, we cannot do anything. We cannot solve the problems of clean air pollution. Uh, we cannot reduce and stop chemical use. We cannot reduce and stop uh, inorganic fertilizer use. So our sole focus at the farm is on uh, regenerating the much degraded soils uh, that <laughs> I've inherited basically. Uh, and sadly, it's a case that, you know, no matter agriculture across the world, 90% of our soils are badly degraded. And, you know, it's something that we need to do something about. And it's, I believe that regenerative agriculture is the answer, basically, if we're also to successfully feed the growing population as well. Um, so how, how are we doing this? How are we improving our soil health? Uh, well, as Anna said, there are five core principles to regenerative agriculture. So that's don't disturb the soil, keep the soil surface covered, have a living root in the ground at all time and grow a diverse range of crops and bring grazing animals back to the land. Uh, one other thing that's recently been added to those principles is context. There's a lot of work being done that, you know, it's all very well having these five key principles, but context. Every farm is different. Uh, you know, from country to country, from county to county, there are different soil types uh, and different sets of circumstances. So, you know, when considering best management and practice on farm, context has to be taken into account. Um, so 
with that being said, uh, as I just scroll down a little bit, uh, so how are we reducing our synthetic crop inputs and sprays? Uh, well, it, it's a bit of a, a circle to be completed because to improve the health of your soil, you need to reduce the inorganic fertilizers and the synthetic uh, chemicals that are damaging the soils. Uh, so we are doing this by replacing chemicals in inorganic fertilizer with biological products uh, and compost that we produce on farm. We're slowly moving towards a system whereby all plant nutrition is produced and used on farm. And it's another circular system whereby we have no waste on the farm. Um, from, uh, for example, we're about to start a huge agroforestry project on Monday, we're planting 12,000 trees on farm. Uh, a lot of that is to produce wood chip to compost and then upcycle that compost into higher grade compost uh, and all sorts of different plant nutrition, basically. And by doing that, we can um, replace inorganic uh, fertilizers and the chemicals that are used on uh, more intensive, in more intensive farming systems and conventional farming systems. Uh, when it comes to food production and growing crops and growing plants, it's our belief that um, uh, we want strong and healthy plants that can resist diseases and pest. Uh, and by producing those strong and healthy plants that resist disease and, uh, 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 and pests, we don't need to apply the bad products, the chemicals, etc. So basically we're constantly monitoring and checking the health of our crops throughout their growing life, basically. From the moment they go in the ground, we dress our seed with biological seed dressings to give them a kickstart, we make our own biological seed dressing, replacing the fungicidal seed dressing that is used in conventional farming. Because there's so much good fungi and bacteria in the soil, we don't want to undo all of that soil biology and the good work that's being done by putting a, a fungicidal seed dressing in there, basically. So we put on our biological seed dressing and then throughout the growth of that crop, we monitor it through leaf tissue testing and sap analysis. And we're asking the plant what it needs, what it needs to continue growing and be productive at the end of its growing cycle, basically. So instead of just at given times of the year, applying fertilizers and chemicals, we're using technology and different means, different metrics to measure and ask the plant what it needs. If it needs something like trace elements, then we can apply those biological. If it needs nutrition, then we can give it nutrition, biological nutrition that we've created on farm. Um, so th this is one thing that we're doing to improve the quality of the crop that we're producing, maintaining yield, because this is something that is often said about regenerative farming. It's all very well doing away with chemicals and um, inorganic fertilizers, but yield will suffer. Well, I can categorically tell you that that is not true. We have now reduced our uh, inorganic fertilizer use by 40% and we haven't seen a drop in our yields. Um, so that's obviously Give beneficial for you. Oh no, not already, Johnny. I've got so much more to say. <laughs> okay, well, listen, so, you know, that's just a little bit about crops. And then, as I alluded to earlier, what we're doing on farm again with agroforestry, you know, it's all very well reducing, taking measures to reduce our emissions on farm, but we want to do as much as we can to sequester carbon and draw down uh, carbon from the atmosphere and lock it into the soil and leave it there. So we're on an absolute mission at Eatsill Farm to plant as many trees as we can, plant as many hedges as we can, always have a living root in the ground. Managed grazing systems and diversity of plant species. Anna alluded to, um, Anna alluded to monocropping. Uh, we no longer monocrop, we bicrop. We're growing spring wheat and spring beans in the same field. Our grazing platforms have more than 18 different grazing species in them. We have diversity in our livestock enterprises, uh, which I think is absolutely key as well, because they're all doing a different role on farm. We have a uh, beef suckler herd, 
we have free range pigs and free range hens. And all of those livestock enterprises are adding nutrition back to the land that we're locking in and feeding our crops with. Um, and did mention that, um, you know, regenerative farming is about profit per hectare. I would question that. That's definitely not our raison d'etre at Eves Hill Farm. We are here to do our very best to mitigate climate change uh, and produce nutrient dense food. It's, you know, the profit thing comes with the job. You know, we're a business. Uh, I wanted to talk about subsidies, but I haven't got time for that. You know, I don't believe that farming should have subsidies at all. Uh, we're building a strong, robust, diverse uh, business at Eves Hill Farm. And we don't rely on any subsidies at all, but we're here to, um, as I said, do the best for the environment and uh, produce nutrient dense food. And I just want to refer you to a quote uh, from Wendell Berry that um, just talks about the food industry and just basically how, you know, the mass production food industry doesn't care about consumer health, but equally the worrying thing about the health industry is they're not really taking nutrition into account when they're talking about treating the sick and the ill. And that is something that we think is fundamentally wrong, that uh, you are what you eat. And if we can produce food that is nutrient dense, it will actually heal and uh, keep people in good heart. And that's exactly what we're trying to do is keep the land and the soil in good heart, but also people that are eating our produce as well. Um, how am I doing, Johnny? That, that seems like a good point to finish at, if that's all right. Well, it's all right. I could speak for hours, but, you know, this is something we're passionate about at Eves Hill Farm. And, um, yeah, I welcome any questions.